I know how overwhelming it is trying to search for information on diabetes on the internet. Being told to eat healthier sounds so vague. Everywhere you go, there is conflicting information or people trying to sell you vitamins or supplements. And it can feel really hard to figure out what to do, what's true and what's not. Look no further because we are here to present you the hard facts specifically when it comes to diabetes. My name is Charmaine and I am the dietitian that helps people reverse type 2 diabetes. And my name is Galia. I'm a coach in the Reversing Diabetes program specializing in exercise. Today, we're going to talk about gut health and diabetes, insights from research. When we talk about gut health, we are really talking about the state of the gut microbiome. The gut microbiome is a collection of microorganisms that live in our digestive tract. These microorganisms have many functions, including nutrient metabolism, immunomodulation, and protection against pathogens. The state of the gut microbiome can positively or negatively impact these functions. When we talk about the state of the microbiome, we are referring to the state of eubiosis, normal or healthy profile, or dysbiosis, imbalance. The state of eubiosis is described by a particular ratio of bacteriodetes to firmicutes typically 95% to 5% respectively. Dysbiosis is any change to the normal flora and ratios mentioned above. So why should we care if our gut is in a state of dysbiosis? Gut dysbiosis directly impacts our nutrient metabolism, inflammation, and insulin resistance, all of which can make diabetes more difficult to manage and also put individuals who are not diabetic at a greater risk for metabolic dysfunction. A study conducted by New Dorp transferred microbiota from lean healthy donors to men with metabolic syndrome. Six weeks post-transfer, the recipients showed a near two-fold improvement in insulin sensitivity, indicating significant improvements in metabolic syndrome. Another study looked at 291 non-diabetic Danish individuals and 75 individuals with type 2 diabetes and analyzed microbiome composition. 19 clusters of micro microbial metabolites were significantly associated with insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome across both groups. This suggests that certain microbiome configurations contribute to the development of insulin resistance. A third study looked at the effects of a normal diet versus a high fat diet for 16 weeks in mice to assess the influence of these diets on inflammatory markers. Inflammatory cytokines like IL-1 IL-6, TNF-alpha are linked to obesity and type 2 diabetes onset. Mice fed the high-fat diet showed weight gain and upregulated TNF-A-alpha levels. A fecal transplant taken from the high-fat diet mice activated NFKB in the control group, showing the influence of microbiome on inflammation. All of this being said, how can we positively influence our gut microbiome? So the current research shows that diet is an essential factor for the composition and also the state of the human gut microbiome. Our current knowledge suggests that a plant-based dietary pattern is an effective way to promote a diverse ecosystem of beneficial microbes that support overall health. All this being said, increasing the amount of plant foods in your diet, even starting with one food per day, can help you improve your gut health, which directly affects your overall health and insulin sensitivity. All in all, eat your plants and let the rest take care of itself. If you like what you heard in this episode and can spare 60 seconds to give us a great review so that the podcast can reach more people, we'd really appreciate it as it can help us change many more lives.